Hi guys, I hope you are all doing well. Let's see today's question. So today's question, we are taking this up from the topic of applications of integrals. That is nothing but we are seeing the question to find the area under the curves which we have using the applications of integrals. And if I talk about the question which is given to us, it says that the area bounded by the curve 2y square equals 3x. So we know it's basically y square equals 3 over 2x. That's basically a parabola equation that is given. And further it says that the lines that are present are x plus y equals 3. And the other line that's present is y equals 0. And outside the circle, so these are the three curves. First of all, a parabola two lines and the third area it's given that says outside the circle whose equation is given by x minus 3 the whole square plus y square equals 2. So we have been given that the area which is bounded by this four curves is nothing but a and then the question further asks us to find out the value of 4 times pi plus 4a is equal to what? So we need to figure out that. And if I talk about the answer choices that are given to us here, the options that are given to us are 30, 42, 84, and the next it's given to us as 102. So we need to figure out which one of the answer choices is the correct answer for the question that is given to us here. Let's figure out how to solve this question first. So let's first plot all the curves that are given to us and let's figure out the area which is present, which is A here. So if I draw that, so I know the curve equation that is given to us is y, equals to, y square equals three over two x. So once I have this equation of parabola, if I compare it, y square equals four ax, from here, if I compare it, I get 4a is 3 over 2. That gives me a is 3 over 8. So we get the value of a already here. Now, once I have the value of a here, let's figure out when I draw my line, x plus y equals to 3, which is this line given, and y equals to 0. y equals to 0 is nothing but the equation of x-axis. And x equals to 0 is the equation of y-axis. So one is this line y equals to zero that is given to us. That is nothing but x axis. Next, if I see, I have x plus y equals to three. So let's plot that also. So to find x intercept, I'll put y as zero. So x becomes three. To find y intercept, I'll put x as zero. That gives me y equals to three. So I have, let's say zero. So one, two, and three. Same ways here also one, two, and so I have 0, 0,3. I also have 3, 0. So now if I draw a line passing through like this, which is my equation of line x plus y equals to 3. So I have my line. I also have the other line y equals to 0. Now let's figure out at what point does this parabola and this line x plus y equals to 3 meet each other. So if I want to find the points of intersection for them, y square equals to 3 over 2x. And the other line equation is x plus y equals to 3. So from here, if I find x, it's nothing but 3 minus y. So I'll just substitute x as 3 minus y in this equation of parabola. That gives me y square equals to 3 over 2, 3 minus y. So if I further solve it, I get 2y square equals 9 minus 3y. Further, if I try to solve it, I get 2y square plus 3y minus 9 equals to 0. Now, if I try to solve this quadratic equation by splitting the middle term, I have minus 9, I have 2. 
So I need two such numbers whose product is minus 18 and the sum of that two numbers should become plus three. So if I have minus 18, I can split it as the product as six into minus three. And if I take the sum of them, it also becomes plus three. So if I split this middle term, I get six Y minus three Y minus nine equals zero. So from here, if I see first two terms and the next two terms, I can take some things out common. So two Y, if I take out common, I get Y plus three minus three. If I take out common, I get Y plus three equals zero. So from here, I get two Y minus three y plus 3 equals 0. So if I equate them both with 0, I get two values for y. 2y minus 3 is 0 or y equals minus 3. So from here, I get y is 3 over 2. And from here, I get y is minus 3. Now, basically, that gives me two points of intersection. But y equals to minus 3, if I see, if I draw the curve, let's say, so 3 over 2 means somewhere here it is intersecting with the parabola. So line and parabola are intersecting here somewhere. And if I draw my curve, it will pass through the origin because if I put x as 0, y also becomes 0. So you will have a curve like this. And once I have this curve here, I know it is intersecting here at y equals to minus 3. And it is intersecting here at y equals to 3 over 2, which is 1.5. So I have my two points of intersection, but it says that it lies between the parabola and these two lines. So till now, we have this much as the area, which is common region. So it is above this. So this area does not come into picture, but it also tells me that it lies outside this circle. So let's first understand the circle. So if I write the circle's equation, x minus 3, the whole square, plus y square equals 2. So if I write this 2, I can write that as root 2 whole squared. So it basically gives me a general equation, which is x minus h, the whole square, y minus k, the whole square equals r square. So once I have that, I have my center coordinates, h comma k as 3 comma 0. I have my radius as root 2. Once I have my h comma k that is center, which is 3 comma 0, and the radius is basically root 2. Root 2, we know it's somewhere 1.414 something. So once I have that, I can draw a circle like this. So radius is root 2, and this is your center of the circle. So this is basically root 2. That's your radius. Now, once I have this, Let's find the common region that we have. So it was told that it is between the parabola, the line and the third line. So this region was the region, but it is also outside the circle. So we need to basically find the area of this region that is present. So once I want to find the area of this shaded region that we have, so basically it looks like this is a parabola. This is an equation of line that is x plus y equals to 3. This is y equals to 0 line and this is your circles equation so it is outside this so we have to find this shaded region so basically first of all what we'll do is we will find the area of entire region so area of entire region basically is let's say a1 and we will also find the area of this sector a2 so then when i want to find the area of shaded region i will use the idea of a1 minus a2 so let's first find out a1 and a2 a1 is nothing but the area of the entire circle and the parabola and the two lines that we are finding out this entire area and a2 is nothing but the area of the sector which is present here which we don't need for the area of shaded region so let's find out a1 and a2 first so if I figure out A1 first, so in A1, I have this parabola with me. I have my lines equation, which is x plus y equals to 3. And I have my third line, which is y equals to 0. So we need to figure out this parabola's equation is y square equals 3 over 2x. So I know area A1, I can use it 
by applying the idea of definite integrals as limit from x1 to x2 function or I can write that as in terms of y also if I take this limit that is a horizontal strip. So that horizontal strip goes from y equals to 0 to y equals to 3 by 2 where the two lines and the parabola are intersecting. So it goes from y1 to y2 function y equals to f of x in terms of dy or I can write that x also in terms of function of y dy. So now once I have that with me, let's put the y limits. So your horizontal strip goes from 0 to 3 by 2. So y equals to 0 to y equals to 3 by 2. If I see x in terms of function of y, the greater function is this, which is outside and the inner function is this. So if I write x in terms of y here for the line, it becomes x equals to 3 minus y. For here, it becomes x equals to 2 over 3y squared. So you have the two functions in terms of x that is basically 3 minus y minus 2 over 3y squared. This entire thing is present with dy. So further, if I try to split it, I get integral of 3 minus y, which is 3y minus integral of y, which is y squared over 2 minus this 2 over 3 integral of y square is y cube over 3. The limits go from 0 to 3 by 2. So if I further apply the limits now, 3 into 3 by 2 minus y square by 2, which is 3 by 2, the whole square divided by 2 minus. This becomes 2 by 9 into 3 by 2, the whole cube. And minus, if I put 0 everywhere, it's going to turn out 0 only because of y present everywhere at least. So it gives me 9 over 2 minus this gives you 9 over 4 divided by 8. So 9 over 8 minus this gives you 2 by 9 into 27 by 8. So from here, 9 is 1 times and 3 times and 2 is 1 times and 4 times. So that gives me, if I try to have the same denominator throughout, that basically gives me that I've multiplied by 4 for the first fraction. I'll multiply it with 2 for the last fraction. That gives you 36 by 8 minus 9 by 8 minus 6 by 8. So 36 minus 9 is 27 and 27 minus 6 is 21. 21 divided by 8 is the area for the first part that is A1. So we get that as 21 divided by 8 for the first part. Let's further find out the other area A2 also. So A2 is nothing but the area of this sector which is present. So for that sector's area, we'll also need the angle which is formed here. So if I try to find out the angle that is formed here, I need the Y coordinate and the X coordinate. So if I see the angle, I can take out this triangle if I draw it and explain it to you. So this triangle, if I'm taking out, this is 90 degree, this being y coordinate 3 and this also being y coordinate x coordinate 3. So that gives me this angle, let's say theta. So if I apply the idea of tan theta opposite over adjacent 3 over 3, which is 1. From there, I get theta is 45 degrees or pi by 4. So pi by 4 radians is the angle that is theta present. If I figure out the area of sector A2, that is for this circle, smaller part of the circle, which is present. I know the theta angle is pi by 4. Or I can write that as 45 degrees. So we know area of sector is given by in terms of degree. If I write out theta divided by 360 into pi r square. So basically that gives me 45 divided by 360 into pi into radius squared, which is 2. So 1 times and 8 times that gives me. 2 pi divided by 8 and that basically gives me pi divided by 4. So I get the second area that is pi by 4. So my area of shaded region which is asked to me that is given to me as A1 minus A2. So A1 we know it is 21 divided by 8. A2 we know it is pi over 4. So once I have 21 divided by 8 and pi over 4 that's the area given. 
and further the question tells us that that is nothing but area a so if i have that with me this basically becomes a now the question is further asking me to find out the value of this expression which is 4 times pi plus 4 a so let's figure out that so the question is asking us to find out 4 times pi plus 4 a's value so if i figure out that 4 times pi plus 4 a in this case is 21 divided by 8 minus pi divided. So that gives you 4 pi plus this if I try to multiply inside 4 into 21 divided by 8 minus 4 into pi by 4 which is pi. So if I solve this pi and pi gets cancelled for 1s for 2s. So you get from here 4 into 21 divided by 2. So 21 Two ones are two twos are two into twenty one that gives you answer as forty two. So you get the answer for the question as forty two, and if you see the answer choice that matches here, it is option B. So B becomes a correct answer here for the question that is given to us. I hope you have understood how to solve this type of questions, which deals with the ideas of finding the areas under the curves that are given to us. So we plotted one of the curves one by one and then we figured out the region that is present that is your shaded region for that we calculated the area of the entire region including the circle minus then we did the area of sector that gave me the area of shaded region so we applied the idea of integrals to find the area and once i applied that i got the area a turning out to become 21 divided by 8 minus 5 by 4 then to figure out the answer for the expression that is given to us I got the answer as 42, which matches with option B. So B becomes the correct answer for the question given to us. I'll see you again tomorrow with some other question from some other topic. And we are going to continue our series of questions on JWE mains. So stay tuned for more videos to roll out. Also, if you're enjoying these videos that we are doing every day, please do like the videos as well and do subscribe to my channel. And share these videos with your friends also who are involved in the preparation of questions on JWE. So they can also take the benefit from these questions which we are solving on everyday basis. Thank you.